This is uh, the return of Power Clinic Online. I'm afraid we've been away for a few weeks, uh, for which I apologize, uh, but we've had a lot going on at Toby Down Rocks. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I was guilty of directing my duties for, for a few weeks. Uh, but we're back, and we're going to start holding them much more regularly again. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about visual scenes. Uh, and visual scenes for communication, but also we're going to move that into making interactive books uh, and making content with a bit of a focus on our new software, Snapscene, although we will talk about the same principles within Communicator as well, for those of you that already use Communicator. Uh, a little bit about Power Clinics. Let's start there. Uh, these are not just webinars where we are supposed to uh, present material to you. We much prefer if they're uh, interactive and you talk to us with specific questions that you have working with your child, family, uh, some speech therapists on the line, so your, 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 your clients or your patients, uh, or the, if some teachers on the line, then some pupils in your class. But please just ask as many questions as you, as you like. Uh, we encourage people of all backgrounds onto these Power Clinic Online webinars. Uh, and we would ask you to just, even if you think your question is really basic, to still ask it because there are no stupid questions. Uh, there's lots of different levels of experience, be that in terms of uh, working with AAC, but also in terms of technology. Uh, there are some people on the webinar who know way more about the technology than I do, it feels like sometimes. Uh, so uh, this is the Visual Scene Clinic night. Uh, we always try to respond to the topics that people ask us for. Uh, so I've lined one up for next month on AAC music and eye gaze music. Uh, that's going to be next month. And that's a topic that a lot of people have been asking for. And I'm looking for a slot at the moment to do one on art and AAC and art and eye gaze. Uh, but tonight is visual scenes. And visual scenes, not just for eye gaze users, but for people who use iPads, for people who use touch-based devices, for people who use whiteboards in schools, and even, believe it or not, this must be a first for me, uh, for people who use paper and low-tech. I'm even going to talk about paper. Uh, so, yeah, that might be a bit difficult for me. <laughs> I had a, uh, a guillotine out today for cutting up squares of paper, which I don't think I've done in about three years. Okay, um, it's just me tonight. Normally we ask somebody else to, to carry the load with me and for it to become conversational. Uh, but it's just me tonight, so just give me a bit of time while I switch in between applications. Uh, and keep the chat coming, please, because uh, as I say, I'm on my own and it's quite difficult just to speak to a room when you're, when you're lonesome. So uh, use the chat window up in the right-hand corner uh, and type in the chat or the question panel there. If somebody could just do that for me, uh, that would really help me just to know that it's working. Somebody say hello. Ah, good. There you go. I've got some questions. Just in map, testing. Hello, hello. Thank you. Perfect. Good. So a little bit of background on visual scenes. Uh, it's, I mean, I've been working in this field for coming up to 20 years now. Uh, and ever since I began, people have been using visual scenes, the idea of putting communication support in some kind of context. The idea that we would make a real scene uh, interactive and create communication boxes as we see here in a typical classroom scene, or making some kind of composite visual scene based on existing symbols. Uh, that became quite trendy, if I can use that word, uh, maybe five or six years ago. Uh, certainly those of you that are used to Sono Primo uh, on, in, on Toby Dynamics Communicator, uh, that was always the concept there, was, was that you presented the symbols in some kind of context. But traditionally, it's actually been much more about this idea of making a, a photograph interactive. So it's been around for an awful long time as a concept. Uh, you might also hear it termed hotspots. You know, certainly in some of our previous training sessions, we've always talked about hotspots. Uh, so hotspots within a photo that, that communicate for us. Um, 
And there are lots of different bits of software, some very kind of low-cost apps out there that, 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 that do this for us. Uh, and then there's also the high-end AAC software, which quite often has it as a feature. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the strengths of each of those software titles in terms of its suitability for, for creating hotspots a bit later. Let me just check the question pay while people are talking. Good, it's just chat. Okay, right. Um, so, in terms of visual scenes, why do you know why is it tempting to go down the visual scene route? Or what's the what's the real motivation uh, from a teacher or a therapist or a, or a family? Um, and it generally works on the principle that words or the word representing a meaning is quite an ab abstract thing, uh, whereas a photograph. Present, uh, representing an object or representing a communication message should be much simpler. Uh, so we have here on the right hand side we have a kind of a photograph of some lunch and then at some point in a child's development or in the development of a child who uses AAC we would expect them to jump up to a, a symbol, a consistent symbol representation of lunch. Uh, I think the history of this would also be before we had digital cameras and before it was so easy to manipulate photos. Uh, but of course, we want the same picture regularly so that somebody can recognize it and find it. I think we all recognize as soon as a company changes its logo, that absolutely throws us. Uh, and actually, we work in eye tracking, uh, and so we know when companies like Pepsi's sales go down because they change their logo and nobody recognizes it anymore. But, but we become familiar with a logo or an icon representing an object. Of course, the long-term goal is for us to drive a child all the way through from a photo representation through to a word representation. But, but, but yeah, that, that takes time. Um, but we should definitely be presenting the kids with the, with the words as, as soon as possible. So historically, we would start with a visual scene to give somebody this, this concept of a simpler picture or something in context. In reality, unfortunately, with visual scenes, we quite often end up with a load of nouns uh, because nouns are easy to take photographs of, whereas adjectives and pronouns and verbs may not be. And so this becomes a problem. Uh, we don't want to just teach nouns. We want to teach full language and all language. Some other background to visual scenes. Quite often, in the in the assessment of a child who needs AAC, we know which piece of software we want to move them towards. So, quite often, somebody will already have a a school will already have a working knowledge of Compass or a working knowledge of Communicator or other software titles, and so they want to go to that vocabulary or that software title. Uh, but they want to kind of work upwards and scaffold upwards from something like visual scenes. So quite often what we also see with software is we we try to make grid-based software work with visual scenes. Uh, this could also present a different problem. So here, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know which software this is, but I found it as an image and it's a good example. It says here that you can make four buttons on this grid represent this turkey uh, and lock all of those buttons together to create a sort of a pseudo visual scene. This is pretty tricky uh, and pretty off-putting, let's put it like that, to a parent or a teacher who's brand new to, to AAC. So, so this is also our kind of experience and, and I would say we're guilty of this as well in some of our software. Uh, where we're tr we, we know that people want to simplify it right down to visual scenes but we're trying to make a square peg fit a round hole. Keep those questions coming if there's anything you want to understand about that. Uh, so the, back to the reasons why we want to go with visual scenes. You know why? You know why? why what are the what are the positive aspects of it? Well, it's a great starting point, and everyone understands them. There's no abstraction required for the for the for the child. Uh, they feature. They should feature familiar settings. They should feature themselves or their toys or their objects, uh, their nouns. Let's say it like that. Uh, and so, so it's quite easy to, to get them going. Uh, a photo represents time and setting, so it gives context to the symbols as well. So in the example here, we can see that somebody's in their lounge on their carpet uh, with their sofa in the background, but you can see clearly we're talking about catching 
and throwing and the different balls. Okay, so, so, so there's a big advantage there. Uh, the language is being used in context. Uh, back to this idea of it's a simple concept. Teachers and, and assistants, brand new to AAC often, I mean, not quite more and more so nowadays, globally, we're seeing that uh, we're working with kids in a mainstream setting, but they may be the only child using AAC. So the teachers don't necessarily understand AAC at all, take them into some complex software, and it's quite difficult for them to buy in uh, and to jump on board. Um, so starting with visual scenes, of course, is a nice, easy way to get that going. Uh, and let's not forget that every parent who has a child who, who needs AAC is new to this as well. Uh, so we cannot just expect you to jump right in at the deep end. One of our biggest failings, I would say, as an industry as a whole, is the kind of the aftercare and, and, and keeping parents and therapists and supporters of somebody using AC developing their skills over time. This is partly why we want to do these power clinics. Uh, Christina has just asked a question, what devices can they be used on? We're definitely going to cover this, but the software that I show you today, uh, I'm going to be focusing on well, three main bits of software. Boardmaker, which can be used on anything online, anything web-based. Uh, I'm going to show you Communicator because that really lends itself to uh, hotspots within software that you probably already have. Uh, and we're going to introduce this new software called Snapscene. The, the big, I, I will concentrate most on Snapscene if I'm honest. Uh, Snapscene is designed to be low cost uh, in terms of AAC software and extremely simple to program. So that's why I'm going to spend a bit of time focusing on that, but to give you ideas about how you might use it, uh, even if your child has moved on somewhat beyond uh, basic visual scenes. Great question, keep them coming. Okay, uh, the cons, uh, the, the pros, let's have the cons. Uh, well, as with any starter AAC system, and I, I, I'm always careful not to name names of kind of techniques and things, uh, but with any low-end uh, system, we often risk kids getting drawn into just very basic vocabulary, drawn into just using AAC to ask for objects or to request for something, uh, and we end up building a child, in, you know, forcing a child into a pure noun-driven vocab. Uh, if you, uh, <laughs> if, if you, well, we get to the end of this session, I'm going to describe uh, that we're not nouners anymore, uh, or we're not too nouny. Uh, we, this is not an anti-noun talk, but <laughs> sometimes we find that, you know, kids are learning milk, glass, Mars bar, stickers, but are not learning more, stop, go, enough, I, you, they. Uh, because we've just started learning nouns. Uh, and because we're taking photos with visual scenes, of course we go that way. What that in turn can do is, li is limit the language that we're exposing the children to, and the kids get stuck there. The other problem with uh, visual scenes is because we're reliant on the types of photos that you take, that the button sizes are often irregular. Now, if somebody is using an alternative access method like eye gaze or switch scanning or touch, uh, we may worry about having a regular size buttons, some too small, some too large, too easy to hit. So, so some of this is the skill of taking the, f the photograph if you have any of those issues. Um, the other thing, just quickly about some of the really simple app software, uh, is that quite often it doesn't support alternative access methods, certainly not eye gaze. If something's been designed with iPad in mind, uh, then, then it won't support eye gaze. But uh, one of the things that we're going to hopefully get across tonight is that because we've because we are building for all access methods, we you know we build for iPad, we build for iGaze, we build for dedicated AAC systems, and we have a cloud system to support our software. Uh, it's now the case that you can create content for on iPad and for iPad, which you can then export and pull over onto your other systems such as iGaze systems. Uh, but traditionally this has always been a, a bit of a problem. The really nice the nicest versions of Visual Scene creation software haven't really supported alternative access methods. Uh, the other thing that we have uh, that can be a problem, or one of the premises of successful implementation of Visual Scenes, is that the children are involved in the design. 
Now, I have been doing this for years. I have always made sure that when I've been working with kids, that we give them the choices of the symbols that when we're, pull, when we're pulling basic boards together, we get them to choose the picture representing toy or we get them the picture representing sandwich because if they're involved in the design, as with any child, if they're in, involved in the design, uh, they're going to use it, they're going to go with it. I have to be careful not to break into anecdotes, but I'm a little bit of a food fascist with uh, visiting children to my house. Uh, I, I, I kind of don't accept it when people say to me he doesn't like tomatoes or he doesn't, I don't mind if he says he's allergic, but when he says he doesn't like tomatoes, I'm, I take it as a personal challenge to make that child eat tomatoes while, while I have them, which generally makes me really unpopular with, uh, with <laughs> other parents, but uh, quite often with children, if you hear they don't like it, but you then involve them in the making of a tomato sandwich or a tomato salad or whatever it might be, surprise, surprise, you quite often find that the kids are more prepared to try it uh, if they've been involved. Uh, and I honestly think AAC can be very similar. The problem we have is that if the software is really confusing and difficult, it's actually really hard to get the kids involved in the design of the, of the content. Because, because of course, if, you, if you're struggling with it as parents, as teachers, as therapists, then you don't want to illustrate that in front of the children because you want them to go with you. I think we might have solved that as well with uh, Snapseam. Okay. Uh, right. I'm going to stop talking for a minute. This is a good opportunity to ask some questions but to also watch this video. Uh, we've just released a free app uh, called Pathways, Toby Dynavox Pathways. You can go away now and you can download it while you're watching this actually. Uh, and it's designed to kind of give guidance to parents, to teachers, to therapists who may not know AAC quite as well as some of us. Um, and I'm just going to unplug my headset. Play it. Somebody could type into the message and just let me know that you can hear it. That would be really helpful. OK. Uh, here we go. The scenes in Snap Scene show. Good, thank you. Let's carry on. What your child might communicate in a particular situation. You want the scenes to draw and keep your child's attention, improve their understanding, and facilitate interaction. And that takes more than just a pretty picture. Let's talk about some key features of scenes identified in research. First, Good scenes focus on people, because people naturally draw our attention, especially their faces. This is true from birth. In fact, young children focus on the people in photographs before anything else, and for a longer period of time. So choose photos that show people engaged in an activity and having fun. This capitalizes on the learner's attention to faces and offers them information about what's being communicated, as you see in this picture. I bet you can guess what's being communicated here. Second, good scenes show people, including the child, actually communicating with each other. This helps you teach interaction and to reinforce that we take turns in communication. Look at these. Both show people in an activity and having fun but only one of them shows a social interaction in progress. It sort of looks like a movie paused in the middle of a conversation. The last characteristic of a good scene is that it shows motivating and familiar activities, people, places, and things. Compare these scenes. This one shows a fun activity with needed objects in a familiar place to the child with familiar people. Familiarity is motivating and comforting to children and helps with their understanding. Limiting the distractors, like unnecessary objects, helps with understanding as well. Let's review by comparing a couple scenes. This is a nice picture, but it doesn't show these two people interacting with each other. And it may be hard for a child to tell what they're doing. Now let's look at this scene. It shows familiar people having fun in a familiar environment. They're interacting in a motivating activity with useful objects. This is a good scene. Now it's your turn. 
Focus on the characteristics of good scenes as you pick photos for snap scene and as you take pictures. Remember that good scenes help you facilitate interaction with your child. Okay. Have you heard that? Okay. Good. Just plug back in. So that video is an example of a video that you will now find in this Pathways app. Uh, the videos are short and sweet. They kind of give simple advice really quickly, uh, and they give good examples. And, th and that, that, that's what we're trying to do now. Uh, rather than kind of relying on people finding information somewhere, uh, we want to supply apps with all of our software in the, in the long term that will support their use and give people the best guidance. Uh, let's just quickly review what this one said, though. Uh, the research tells us, uh, of course we should focus on people and what the people are doing and how the people are feeling. This stops us getting too nouny, uh, nounist, nouny. Uh, obviously if somebody's engaged in an activity it's more, it's more motivating. I like this idea that it, it encourages a social exchange and gets the child interested in this turn taking. Making sure that we're taking a photo as if the movie is paused is a good idea. Focusing on people, places, and things. How do we know that people look at faces longer? Uh, well, actually, we know that from eye tracking. <laughs> That's one of, the, one of the ways that we know, which we, we, we have something to do with. Uh, and familiarity is, as, as Bethany said in the video, motivating and comforting. Uh, I just want to reinforce, though, that we should try and make sure the child is actively involved in the design of the photograph and of the activity uh, and itself. I have a question. Have I, uh, is somebody saying I'm quiet, is it, is it okay? Can somebody just say if the, the volume's, just rearrange my headset, is that loud enough? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so getting the non-nouns in. If we focus on the people, we can work on getting things like take and catch and get and hit and getting some good verbs involved, uh, rather than just taking a Kim's game approach to it where we take a photograph of lots of different objects and name them. So, so getting activity in is a really great idea. Thinking about the sorts of activities that the child is involved in, so getting on slides, swings, climbing, all these sorts of things, interacting with your cat, as you see in the photo here. Uh, these are all good things to be, uh, to be thinking about when you, when you create your, your scenes. Okay, we're going to jump out into the software and I'm going to show you some, some, some examples of, of visual scenes as they are within our software. And then we'll get onto the interactive books. Uh, okay, volume's good. Right, let's uh, escape out into Boardmaker Online. I don't know how many of you use Boardmaker Online, but it's worth a... Uh, it's definitely worth looking at. Just so you know, this is free for everybody uh, to trial for 30 days. Uh, even after that, it's relatively low cost compared to how Boardmaker used to be, especially for parents. Uh, so in the UK, we're looking at about, I think, six pounds a month or five pounds a month. Uh, but the idea with Boardmaker Online is that we have interactive activities which can be used on iPads, whiteboards, uh, used on I guess systems actually now because everything's just running in a web browser. So you can see here, uh, I'm just in Chrome and I've opened up Boardmaker Online and I'm searching for visual scenes. So look at this. We have 2,018 examples of visual scenes created using Boardmaker. Uh, here we have all of the paper resources. And here we have all of the interactive resources. You see these different markers. So if I was just after a good visual scene on a specific subject, it's the summer, we're all about to go off on vacation. And I'm just browsing down, you can see we've got a beach visual scene. Let's have a look at it. And here we have a nice communication scenario. So before I got into the, the full-on uh, interactive stuff, I just wanted to show you that, that even on paper there's a, a huge number of uh, examples 
of visual scenes. But these do work on that basis that you are making a composite picture. Uh, so, so it, again, becomes very noun-driven. Let me just show you here. Yeah. So you see here the mistake we're making of just getting into the goat and the horse and the chicken and the orca and the starfish. But we're not talking here about swimming or flying or the noises the animals make because this is a noun-based activity. Okay, but, but don't ignore Boardmaker, uh, and I'll come back to why we won't ignore that in a little while when I get into some of my examples in Snapseam. The, the beauty of Boardmaker is that it's all of your symbols available for you to create paper resources um, and print these out at home and have the symbols that you would normally find on your on your AAC systems. Uh, so if we just concentrate on just getting your 30-day trial going, you could print all of the possible symbols you would want to use in your visual scenes later. We'll come back to that. Okay, next let's take a look at Communicator 5. Uh, so some of you have already got AAC systems and you're probably already using Communicator, uh, or many of you are using Communicator already. Uh, and it, visual scenes are one of those things that uh, people just don't often realize they can do. So I just want to just spend a couple of minutes just recapping how you create a visual scene. So let's uh, start my trial. Okay, uh, I'll show you how we've made visual scenes. Here is a good example of a visual scene, I think. Uh, it's got people in it that we recognize. It has somebody doing something. It got somebody else doing something up here. Uh, it's got somebody doing something here. And we've got some other objects. And I think with this cobbled street and this curb and the scooter here, uh, it gives us context. It gives us a scene. Uh, okay, if I go into edit mode here, uh, you can see that I have objects around my uh, transparent buttons, irregular shaped transparent buttons around my objects. Uh, so let's create. Let's let's. Uh, Let's bring this boy into the story, and I'll show you how we, how we do it. So, uh, on the left here, I have my polygon button. And I can click once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, and on the last one, double click to give me my button. Now, I need to make this button transparent, so I go to my fill tool and fill it in with nothing as a transparent. And I then go to my thick border thickness and go for no line. That's something we should discuss. Should we have lines around our objects in a visual scene or not? I'll let you answer that in the questions panel. Uh, somebody's asked, will this work in Communicator 4? Absolutely, 100% this will work in Communicator 4. This one was actually created in Communicator 4. So uh, great question. Yeah, all of the features in Communicator 4 are carried through into Communicator 5. Uh, Communicator 5, most of the improvements in Communicator 5 were either for kind of touch access on a, on a touch screen, uh, but also a lot of big uh, improvements for word prediction and for text users. But for users at this level, visual scenes, very little difference between 4 and 5. Okay, uh, okay so we have our... Uh, while I'm talking, I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether you, have, whether you should have lines on your buttons or not, uh, and why. I'm just interested to hear what you think. Uh, but here we have our object here. I can now go into the sound for this button, go for a recorded sound. We will always give sound a, a label uh, in, uh, in Communicator. I always recommend that you do. The reason I always recommend it is because if for whatever reason we transfer the files between different computers and the same recordings don't get transported with it, it will revert to just giving the synthesized computer voice for the label, which is a good thing to do. So let's say this is bring, as in bring me food, or bring me some food, and then I will record. Bring me some of that food. And finish. 
save. Let's close that down. And now I have this button, which I heard in my headset. You probably didn't hear it. Now, one thing that I haven't made clear is how we got that picture in in the first place. So let's just quickly recap on this as well, or review this. OK, so to bring any photo into Communicator, what we're really doing is we're putting invisible buttons on a background. So we're setting the background to be the photograph. Let's go for a new page here. Right click, new page. Into the button, oh, sorry, the page, sorry. Into the page properties, the background. Browse to a picture. I have some pictures on my desktop. That's a very boring photo. Let's just try again. Uh, okay, this is a photo from the other day. We were out and we were watching drones flying. Uh, but what I've done here is I've just browsed to a photo uh, and inserted it as the background. From here, let's just recap again. We choose our polygon button and we do one, two, three, four, five. When we get to the last one, we double click, make the button transparent with the fill tool and change our line and record as appropriate. As soon as we go into play mode, yeah, <laughs> sorry. What was happening when you go live? Let's just make this the start page for a moment. Press play, and here we have our button. Good, I'm just checking the chat window. Uh, somebody's saying, we do lines around the object until somebody's looked at it and then it disappears. Yeah, so that's the feedback from iGaze software quite often is that as soon as you press, you get the lines, but you wouldn't necessarily have them before. Uh, Somebody else has said, I like no lines, not sure why, it doesn't interfere with the photo. I think what we should do is just make sure that we give it as an option. Okay, so let's just, if we really wanted to reinforce that there were buttons on this page, or actually rather on the previous page which had more buttons, let me just give you a quick tip. Uh, so let's set this as the first page. You could go around each of these buttons one by one, changing the line to a thicker line. But as with any good Windows program, you should really do Control A to select all buttons, or edit, select all, same thing, and then change your line thickness, which will make them all have a nice thick line. Uh, you can change the line color if you wish. Uh, let's not do that now. I don't want to concentrate just on this, but there you go. You now have lines around your objects. I think everyone would agree it doesn't look quite as nice. But you can mess around with the thickness and the colors, etc. Somebody's asked a question. I like lines for kids with visual issues, and it helps them direct their vision in a more organized way. Susan's arrived. Hi, Susan. I've got Susan all on the line. I might make you a presenter, Susan, for some of it in a, in a, in a, in a while, but I'm going to keep you quiet for a moment. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so Communicator, uh, one of the things we would want to do here is take somebody on from just the nouns, just the images. Uh, of course, we can bring some verbs in here, like bring the food or eat here. We could try to make that, or drink. Yeah, we could make that into a verb. But the other thing to remember is that at some point, what we want to do is we want to insert some buttons. So why not have here uh, like and apply the picture text and put like in there. You know that this is absolutely fine. This idea of having a a photograph with composite images to support the photo uh, is something we've been doing for an awful long time. One tip, though, if you are planning to do this, uh, is to maybe mess around with the photo so that you've got some nice spaces to drop icons into. 
So you can see here, we've got some dead space here and some dead space here. Uh, so don't always worry about getting the perfect photo. Maybe think ahead a little bit and think, actually, I would like to put some symbols into this later. Uh, so yeah, extremely simple to do. Uh, obviously, go through the same recording process that you would do uh, with, with, the, with the buttons when we recorded there as well. OK, let's go back. OK, it's time to look at Snapseam. Uh, now, uh, Snapseam is really something that we've been talking about at Toby Dynamics for an awful long time. Uh, I've been talking about it ever since Gaze Viewer came out. So Gaze Viewer is a program where we can record what children look at, or not just children, but humans. In fact, not just humans, but actually anything with eyes, we can record uh, what they look at. Um, and because we knew what some of the kind of the, the, the most challenged kids that we're working with were looking at, and we knew what they were looking at, I wanted to turn what they were looking at into their first experiences with communication, uh, which is just such an obvious thing to do. If we know where somebody's attention is, we should make that thing do something. Uh, so a lot of this actually goes back to eye tracking, and that we wanted eye tracking to 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 drive the conversation forward for some of those most challenged kids. Um, and then it became something much more uh, mainstream, actually, I would say, uh, and much more aimed at iPad uh, and low-cost AAC. And that's really what Snapseam is. Now, as a piece of software, let's just jump across to it. Uh, it is exactly the same on my Surface Pro screen that you can see here uh, as it is on an iPad. So all the dimensions remain the same, uh, the buttons are the same, the programming is absolutely identical. Uh, it's designed to be extremely simple, only recorded voice, only photographs or images that you import, so no symbol support or anything in there, uh, extremely low cost, so this costs £40. Uh, it costs £40 on the iPad as the app. Uh, that's $50, I think. Regardless of Brexit, I think that's $50. Uh, and exactly the same price on the iGaze. So the, low, the, the cost is meant to be kind of uniform across the whole of the, the world that we interface with. Um, the basic idea with it is that you can import any photo and draw hotspots and create visual scenes. So if I go to some of the examples that they come with as standard, uh, you can see here we're back to this catch one. Uh, I'll just unplug my headset so you can... And go to play mode. And, it's here. and we have the option to have recorded voice catch it. and labels. Push it. Labels that expand when you select and look. You know, it works with eye, looking with eye gaze, touching. This will also work with switch scanning. Uh, but you can see here they're using some of the examples that they, they showed in the video earlier. Now we're going to hopefully work through how to make a visual scene in this, and I'm going to give you some ideas about how to make good visual scenes. But really what I want to focus on and I know a lot of you who are at the webinar this evening are really interested in is how to create books easily. The, the huge advantage of Snapseam over any other software that I've ever worked with in my 20 years is absolutely its ease of programming. It is, without doubt, the easiest piece of software we've ever created. Uh, and that took a lot of discipline, actually. It took a lot of discipline to not allow the features to creep. So we're keeping it as basic and as simple as possible. But what we wanted to do is to signpost up to other solutions later on as somebody progresses beyond nouns, beyond just interactive. What I love about it from the people who've already got AAC software, so if you're already using Communicator or you're already using Compass and you're using or using Pod and you're using a, a good, rich language system, there is absolutely nothing wrong with coming back to interactive content that's familiar and that's interesting and engaging, and it's not just a page of symbols. Uh, we're also going to look at how to create a hybrid between those two worlds. So uh, I took some stick on Facebook earlier for this, but here's Wonder Pets. I, I don't have the theme tune in case Tracy's online. 
but all I did is, uh, I'm lucky my wife is a complete hoarder, so she never throws away any of the books that our kids had when they were three months old. <laughs> uh, and what I did with my uh, iPad is I went and took all of these photos. And it took seconds. If I go into create mode and I want to add a page, it just opens up your camera straight away. So you've got a nice view of my uh, <laughs> the back of my desk here. Uh, if I flip the camera, you have a nice image of me. Hello, everyone. Uh, and I can smile, look at the camera, and take a photo. It's not really a smile, it's a bit of a frown, but accept. And now that's gone into my uh, book here. From here, I can draw on the screen. Actually, I've got a touch screen, so I should use it. I can draw, but I can also hotspot and record. Hector, I can add a label. And I am done. Go to play mode and record. Hector. Okay, so that's how simple the software is to record. Let's stop looking at me. Okay, so with my uh, camera on my iPad, all I did this morning was I went through and in a minute had taken a photo of every page of the book. At this point, it's up to us now to, to turn this into language and communication. Let's step back away from books for a minute, though. I'd like to go to familiar scenes. Now, I realize that I'm going against all of everything I said earlier in terms of nounism. Uh, and so, you know, we're back to nouns again. But I just wanted to introduce this concept of how a photo can actually be so many more things than just these nouns. Uh, here, uh, I just went to my boys' bedrooms and took some photos. And you can see I kind of pulled together a pirate ship and a Star Wars Lego, uh, and some cars and my Star Wars bag here. Using the software, I then hotspotted around to create the uh, to create the images, and I could stop there. But the beauty of the software is, is that now I can use that same photo and zoom down to each of these. So if I go into create mode now and add a picture, pick a photo, let's go back to here again and choose this. If I wanted to talk about my family here, I would be able to, using the iPad you just zoom in with your fingers, but using this we can just zoom in to a much smaller part of the picture and then start drawing. And that's what I've done. Uh, I have a simple choice making activity here, which works with eye gaze, which works with touch, but when the child says, hey, I'd like to talk about my pirate ship, let's go to play mode. I can then take them down to the pirate ship, and while we're playing with the pirate ship, we can talk about the sail and the ladder. And we can really get these words jumping out when the kids press them. Okay, so this idea that uh, something, yeah, a single picture can create a load of communication opportunities is a great idea. If I go to my car here, I've got all the different parts of the car. And when I go to my Lego, because I didn't know the names of all of the objects. But I did get all of the things that are yellow to teach my colors. And then I got my greens and my grays. So a photo, we can pick out any of the different learning opportunities we want from a single photo. OK, good. Let's take that argument a little further uh, and talk about uh, introducing symbols. So. Let's go back to my PowerPoint for a moment. Uh, so, what we want to do is we want to take somebody moving from just symbols 
uh, sorry, just nouns and photographs, and take them through into the core language that they're going to need later in their AAC system. I have a question, so I'm just going to quickly take that. Uh, somebody's asking, can you change the color of the text and its background for helping vision? Uh, Thea, this is the feature creep we were talking about. The minute we start introducing new settings, everything gets a lot more complicated. So in version one, no. Uh, it's something that <laughs> keeps coming, actually. Uh, it's one of those features that now that we've released it, we've had quite a few requests for that. So uh, yeah, watch this space. I, I can see it's one of those settings that we might allow in, but not yet. Just say that for now, not yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. There are other ways for us to introduce uh, text. Let's talk about that in a minute. Okay. I just want to talk about core language for a moment, though. Uh, and so our default communication strategy within Compass uh, is core first. And it's actually where we're putting a lot of work uh, in at Toby Dynamox at the moment. So you'll, you're going to hear a lot more about core first in the next number of months. Uh, this is our vocabulary where we're really focusing uh, the, the emerging communicator into their core language. And we build them up step by step if necessary. So some, there are definitely different schools of uh, thought on language. And some people really want to give the kids as many words as possible, as physically possible maybe, uh, just to get modeling going and really get that language going. There are definitely speech language therapists and teachers out there who prefer the method of scaffolding up and starting with six words, building up to 12, to 15, to 18. We're not here to police that, uh, actually. We, we, we should say, we should supply the tools and it's really up to you. Uh, but one thing I absolutely would say uh, is that we should learn these words. You know, we should recognize that I, you, it, and he, and what, and who, and where, and when, and stop, and go, and give, and find, and put, are all words that we should be coaching and teaching on. Okay, and it's trying to give as many opportunities for children to learn those words and use those words uh, as possible. And obviously visual scenes don't, as it would appear, first appear, support a lot of this. How do you get uh, who or what into a visual scene? And so, uh, like a good boy scout this morning, this is what I did. Uh, I took a screenshot of my Core First app, or I could have gone into BoardMaker and downloaded any number of the core word boards that are in BoardMaker Online, uh, and printed out onto paper, found the guillotine, and sliced up my communication cards. Uh, I was obviously taking inspiration from the pod groups uh, online. Uh, and I just thought this is probably the best way to start getting symbols into our scenes. Don't try and do it in a software way. Do it with paper and do it in a paper way. And what we ended up with was things like this. Uh, I want, uh, I want tell you, I want tell you the tale, I want tell you the ears, I want to tell you the eyes. And so just through some simple editing, I can make that happen. Let's do it on touch screen. I. Do I want a label? Hmm, maybe. We can actually, even if you do these, we can turn them off. Hotspot. Want. Uh, okay. I'm just going to do the tail just for the. Oh. I dropped this picture in for all the Swedes. These Brio toys are the uh, are the big Swedish thing. Springy tail. And you can see we're very quickly into, back into play mode. I ah, want, want, springy tail. And we're off, off and running. Again, that will work with eye gaze. OK. So even if we're just working on the, the nouny pictures uh, and the pictures that drive a lot of noun communication, why not 
start dropping our core words into these pictures to really start reinforcing modeling uh, and using those within our communication messages. Uh, this gives me a really nice bridge into my AAC software later. Now just to kind of quickly recap about core first, this might look scary at first. What we try to do with core first is allow you to scale it back and forth. So if this feels less scary, we can start somebody there and build them up. It's up to you. It, you can see it doesn't take long to do. You just literally go into the settings and then scale somebody back or forth. Okay. Happy to take any questions on that. Uh, I really like the idea of dropping physical print printout symbols into our uh, into our scenes. Yeah. Because the software is so easy to program, it's much nicer for me than doing what we did in Communicator, which is kind of drawing buttons onto photos. The other thing that the research would say, of course, is that the child should be involved in the design. And the fact that I can just go into create mode, take somebody's finger, uh, sorry, going to hotspot here, take somebody's finger and help them draw around it while I then, or get their brother to record you, yeah, and then, you know, let them be involved in me typing out the, the, the word. Uh, because the software is so easy, we're very confident that parents and teachers who are not used to AC will actually do this. Whereas in my experience, with a lot of our other software titles, they feel a little bit more daunting for somebody who's new. What we're all after in this field is to get people actually using our software and actually using AAC. So, so th this is where I see the real advantage here. Uh, I've got some questions, let me just check. Uh, somebody said we're only hampered by our own creativity. Couldn't agree more, thank you. Uh, easy peasy to, put, to get symbols into a photo. What software did you use to get the page of core vocab? Uh, Sorry, I see people jumping up here. Uh, right, so just for that question, I used Compass on my iPad. It looks like this, exactly like this. This is the Windows version of the software. And I took a photo of the screen. That's all I did. I took a photo of the screen, I printed that photo, and I guillotined it. What I'm going to do after this webinar is I'm going to send a PDF of the main screens of Core First out to everybody who's here so that you've got a PDF. And in the long term, what we're hoping to do is make this downloadable from our, from our website. Uh, I can also upload it into the Facebook group so people can, uh, can grab it. So if anybody's watching the recording of this, this will be in the files of the Toby UK Facebook group. Okay. Good. Books. Let's get back to books. Uh, we're not going to go with the egotistical Hector book. We're going to go back to Wonder Pets. Now, what um, I'm going to bring Susan Norwell in now. So let me just go into the control panel. People just give me a moment. Uh, Susan, I'm just going to make you a, a presenter. Just give me a second. Hi, Susan. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I think everyone can hear you. I hope so. Good. Uh, we were chatting earlier about making interactive books and how it's been a real challenge, I would say. It's a challenge. I was trying to do things in Sono Flex. I've been trying to do things in just blank communicator pages to give kids language so they can take picture walks or talk about books at the same time as they're reading the book. So this seems to fulfill a, a, it fixes a problem for me, which is that it was just so laborious <laughs> that it was getting untenable. Should we walk through your example first, maybe, and then I'll do my Wonder Pets example? Okay. So this is just a, a level C book that I would use for guided reading, but in guided reading, you definitely want kids to take a picture walk first, and the whole idea of the picture walk is to build the vocabulary. Um, and it's kind of hard to do that. I, I really think that they, they do better on screen sometimes than they do on books themselves on paper books, but I don't want to take them away from their language. So I was trying to build it and communicate it was too hard. But what we decided to do was to take a look at 
um, or I decided to do, I used snap screen and I just, snap scene, and I just took pictures like the, you know, screenshots of the book and then uploaded them and created hot spots. But so it's not all nouny. Oh, can I, do, can I have presenter? No, I can just talk. You have to click, right? Just direct me, Susan. Oh, okay, click here. Click the second picture. Oh, sorry, I'm not in, I'm not in play mode. My fault. Let's go here. This one? Yep. Yeah. Um, and so there's hot spots um, so they can learn the vocabulary that you would be teaching them anyway within the lesson plan. Oh, except I misspelled goat. That's really <laughs> not a gore. Um, but there are certain words within the story that you would teach. Um, and so those words could be part of the scene and they could go and play with them, which was, you know, the idea I had is that I would at least know what they are engaging with. And I personally like hot spots because I think it helps in this situation focus them on the parts of the story they're going to have to come and see. I really liked what I could do with the next page, though. So if you go to the next page, one of the things that um, is really essential is that we have kids have a focus question before they read. So the focus question for this book is, how do you know what animal will come next in the story? And so I'm able to you know, give them that question, and I recorded it so they could read the question out loud, and then we could start to go through the book. And the interesting thing, if you look at the next page, and that's as far as I went, it's just four pages before I handed it off to Hector, is that every page, it's got an animal that's in the house already, and then an animal that's got a clue so you know what's coming next. And now, because of this software, I could put it on their eye gaze device and they could be looking to what's coming next and have a way to be able to answer that key question without me having to give them choices. No. I just don't want to get into choices. I would really have it be much more communicative. The other piece is that they can then direct the discussion about the book based on what they're looking at. Mm. Or touching, of course. Or touching, uh, right, right, yeah. right. So, so I mean, and this didn't take long, right? <laughs> no, well, see, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I've been working for a long time on this same book and communicator, trying to build language and trying to build the, the piece of it that was the picture walk. And I do the same thing in um, Clicker, the same thing in Classroom Suite. It's just, just very laborious. And this is so darn fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, so fast. So I, I again, I think Carolyn must like... Well, Muscle White said at one point, you know, if you can't do it in a nanosecond, it's not going to get done in the classroom because teachers just don't have a lot of time, neither do parents. So I'm always looking for things that I can give people that will still support literacy, but it'll be fast and easy and do it well. You know, I don't want to noun people to death, but this fits the purpose of a picture walk, which is really essential. Um, and then we kind of have a hybrid language thing we put together. I don't know if you're going to show that, but... Um, just a way we could give more language around it too. Definitely show that in a moment. Um, one thing that somebody was asking was how we shared this. So let me just show you how that, that happens. The way the file structure works, because you've got to remember we're working on iPad and on PC. So we cannot just make it so that it has a, a, a full a file searching system because that just doesn't work in iPad. Uh, so what we do is we use the cloud server that comes free from Toby Dynamox with all of our suites. Uh, and we manage our scenes here. Now, the, the buttons are a little bit small on, the, uh, on my surface. That's actually just a bug, actually. Uh, on the iPad, these buttons are much, much bigger. But it's really see, beautiful on the iPad. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just the buttons go a bit smaller. It, this happens on quite a lot of different software on surfaces, specifically, uh -huh. just with their, their high resolution. But you can see here that I can export this entire document into the cloud. Okay. You have to pick the title page, like the the folder. Yeah, yeah. But, so just so you know, I can I can export everything if I want. So I can export the entire, uh, all of my scenes, everything up into the cloud. On a PC as well, I can export to local storage as well. So that obviously means I can share that share that file directly. But what's going to happen in the future, we have to be careful with copyright, we should say at this point. Uh, but, but really, realistically, we're going to be able to get these books or share content that you're just agreeing to share amongst yourselves, photos that work, scenes that work, uh, and you're going to be able to put them up into my Toby Dynamox and share them. 
for now, you're going to need to use the Windows software to really do that if you wanted to share unique files. But if you're just sharing them between your own devices linked into your own MyToby Dynamox account, you would just export either the selected scene or, or the, all the categories and scenes up into the cloud and then import from your other device. What I love about this is that programming on the iPad is an absolute dream. I mean, it is so simple. And I think a lot of parents have got iPads. They can uh, sit anywhere they like and just, with a coffee, just program away. While their child is at school with their iGaze system or their other device, create the content and then just bump it up into the cloud and download when they get to the, to the device. This I makes... came in a little late. Did you mention some of the social aspects? I mean, that's the thing with the iPad. You know, if you've got a kiddo who's nonverbal and it's hard to engage in a situation, you're at a birthday party, and they show an interest in something, you can take a quick picture of it, create some quick language so they can say things or share things with their peers. I mean, I just think about in the moment sometimes with, our, with kids with complex disabilities, that's, so that's what I meant by we're just hampered by our own creativity. I mean, we could do a lot in terms of you know, kids sitting around a lunch table and they're chit-chatting about um, Frozen the movie and you don't have anything on their device for that or they don't have a device and you just pull up a picture off the internet and now you start to put some language in it, you know, hot spots, so they can join in and be a part of the discussion. That takes about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Two minutes. Yep. Somebody just asked, what is this cloud? What is my Toby Dynamox? So let's just quickly answer this. Uh, so whenever you uh, buy a device from us, uh, you get access to your own free cloud space which for things like Communicator just meant that you could upload things into Page Set Central and, and upload your pages to keep them secure and get to be able to access them from anywhere. Uh, you'll see here in my Snapseen though, I've got all of my different backups of Snapseen here. Yeah. So this, this allows you to create toy boxes, visual scenes, books, and just save those individual files up into your space. Today, we do not have the ability to share these, okay, as you can with something like Page Set Central for Communicator. However, uh, because you're at the webinar tonight or, or watching this on recording, this is in the this is in the works. So very shortly, if Susan creates some fantastic materials, uh, for those who don't know Susan Orwell, who works with the Rett Syndrome community in a big way, uh, once you create these, you're going to be able to share them. Uh, so I think. The future is bright for the interactive book, the interactive activity model. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get to the stage where parents are really creating activities and sharing them, which I'm, I'm personally quite excited about. OK. Uh, one thing about the Windows version, let's just mention this. Susan and I were also talking earlier. It is a window. Yeah? This is fine, yeah? So it's just a window. Uh, so I can dock this on the left-hand side like that, and then I can bring my communicator. That's not use compass. Let's use uh, let's use communicator uh, and just bring up my Cineflex homepage. Press play. Okay. From here, right click anywhere. Ah. <laughs> I never use licensed software. I get a lot of flack from my colleagues it's about. It's pathetic. You need to get some licensed software. <laughs> Uh, I, that's that's going to cost me a hundred dollars, I reckon, for that. Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just loading Communicator back. I got it for free. I just want you to know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean as a fine uh, that would mm. cost me uh, for, <laughs> for that. Okay, so what we might want to do with somebody is we might want them to have a, a visual scene that you've created or a book that you've created interactively uh, on the side here. Uh, let's just wait my my five seconds. Okay. Uh, into Sony Flex, right click anywhere and run in a window. Drag off to the right or the left. And here I then end up with my interactive scene here with buttons. Yay! I love this. And then my language on the right. And it's absolutely feasible that somebody can just jump between the two. Okay, so I can talk about my toys here uh, with my core words, and I want to describe them. Yeah, and I want to go into my pirate ship, and I want to say my pirate ship is good. 
yeah, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so you I can have this, ultimate, this like, the ultimate goal, just the ultimate goal. I, I, I also think the feature that you have to note here as well is we go to the settings and make the navigation bar as small as possible, then obviously you get a nicer mix of uh, button sizes between the, between the two. So yeah, and, I, I, I think yeah. this is a great, great option. And for kids who have motor planning problems, like the rec girls with Rett syndrome, boys with Rett syndrome, we never like to give them something 6, then 8, then 10, then 12, because every time they face a new page, it's a new motor plan. They're better off having the complex and learning it from the get-go than to have things change and move to different positions. So that's a place where you have to consider yeah, kind of yeah. where you go, how you scaffold. Okay, I've got some questions. Uh, somebody's had to leave, but they asked the questions before they left. Does iGaze work with the iPad? No. The software works with the iPad, and the iPad works with Touch and with Switch. But uh, because it's exactly the same software in the Windows version, it's exactly the same. Yeah, you can upload to the cloud with both. Uh, but if you want to use iGaze, you use the Windows version of the software. I am absolutely convinced people will have both. Actually, uh, you know, you know, for for modeling and for creating materials on the iPad, and then having the uh, the PC software. We try to keep it as low cost as possible, so I think it still works even if you have both. Can I ask you a question? If you yeah, make yeah. something on the iPad, it'll import into the Windows and vice versa. Yeah, that's what I did with yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's the it's the holy grail, honestly, for us. It really the is. Idea, that's mm -hmm. the idea that you can create content on iPad that's usable on alternative systems. That's huge. Is is is, is, is nobody else has done this. So, no. so it's a big, it's a big thing for us, yeah, yeah, and that's the way we're going. With it's also the same for Compass, uh, but it's the way that we're planning everything to be moving forward. Cloud plays a big, big role in the the link between programmer and user, or home and school. You know, it, play, it plays a massive role. Okay, somebody else asked, uh, how did you get the split screen? I blinked. Okay, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> so uh, let's put them both back full screen. He makes it look very easy. <laughs> We had a long conversation about this earlier. So this is just a window. And one of the beautiful features of Windows, since Windows 8, I think, uh, is that you can drag a window off one side of the screen, and it snaps to half screen. Then when I go to my other one, yeah, I drag it to the right of the screen, and it off the screen snaps to half screen. So it allows you to just tile windows. Yeah. Uh, so just grab the, grab the taskbar and move them across. The only thing with Communicator you need to be aware of is that you need to, to run in a window mode, whereas a lot of you will have your systems running in full mode without this bar. Uh, so here, you right-click full screen mode, right-click again, window mode. As soon as you're in window mode, drag it off. Okay, good. Let's go back to Wonder Pets, <laughs> uh, because I also want to just remind you that yeah, okay, we've read the book, and we might have read the book in a very nouny way, okay, hotspotting all of the objects, but then what we might want to do is zoom in on the words. And one of the things I always enjoyed doing with my kids was this last word in the rhyme game. I mean, we must all do this, right, Susan? Yes. Yeah. They helped Absolutely. a frog in a puddle for his bath and a little, what was Could. it? What was it? And they pressed the button, oh, we're not in play, create mode, we're in, let's put in play mode, a cuddle. cuddle. Yeah. And this idea of kind of anticipation for somebody in a communication exercise is a wonderful thing to do with all children, not just kids who use AAC. Uh, so all I did here was I zoomed in on the words to create that simple activity. Now, we could hotspot every single word here if we so wish, but we have to kind of think what the game is or what the activity is. And I think this is a, a great use of it. Uh, we might just pull out the sight words here, might we? the core words. We mm -hmm. might just put the, the, the verbs. Who knows? It's so easy to program. I think you'll just do it as you go along. Uh, okay. And then back here to this concept. So I have got within compass, uh, within core first, or with any, any core word strategy, this could also be the, the core words here, couldn't it? This could be the core words in, in Sonoflex. It doesn't matter. Whatever they are, if we print them out though and drop them in, then we end up with Ming Ming, Ming, Ming. and Frog and Tuck. But the activity becomes Who? 
who's here? And we get that word who known. Who? Who's here? And then we can have the conversation about Tuck Tuck and the frog. And frog. Where are they? Where? Well, they're in the garden and in the pond. Who's that? Is that you, Susan? That's me. Sorry. I hit a button by accident. <laughs> right. But there's the thing. You might need to meet me. I, I would really encourage people to not just think about making a book interactive, I would also then think about how to get the core words and the language we're trying to get going with an individual into their into their books. And I think just doing it on paper is about as easy a way as i found. I also just think it means that, that teachers and, and parents have got these cards around at all times to kind of really kind of cue kids in on, the, on their symbols. Okay, we have some questions. Uh, software is great. Okay, yeah, I think that's just that's just positive. <laughs> okay, I don't need to read all that out. Okay, back to my presentation because I realise we're running over a little bit, but that's every power clinic has has gone over, so that's good. Uh, yeah, so just to wrap up, uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about was was siblings. How many of us have actually got the siblings of our AAC users? creating content because when I was talking to my boys earlier uh, you know the things your kids are talking uh, to your other kids about are very different from the things that, that you guys are talking to your kids about and we try all to be cool parents and to know every single Pokemon but in reality we don't it's our kids who know that uh, so I would really encourage you with Snapseen to get your kids involved because they will be able to program this yeah, yep. I, I, for the first time ever, we might have a piece of software that siblings will go, yeah, I can do that, and off they go. Uh, Kids so can I learn really, to code, they can do this. They can learn to code, they can do this, absolutely. But, but also, there's nothing they can muck up in here. There's nothing they can make go wrong. Uh, it's just adding a page, and, and it can be deleted easily. And they should experiment. They should use their recordings. They should get their kids recording the voices, because they don't want mum's voice in there, right? Uh, so, so I would really uh, encourage you to to get brothers and sisters programming on Snapseen. If you would like me to run a webinar with your kids at some point, I'll do it. Okay, and uh, and you can get me and my boy. We'll get me and my boys talking about Pokemon till 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 you're bored of it. But but let's get the kids programming. I really want to reinforce that before we wrap up. Uh, a question that's just come in about Snapseen. Great question. Uh, the uh, What's the difference between the first, uh, the full version and the light version on the iPad? So what we've done with the light version of Snapseen on the iPad is we've restricted it to 10 scenes. Okay, that's it. Everything else works functionally. So if you're using less than 10 scenes, it's fine. I think you're going to want more than 10 scenes. You're going to want more than 10 interactive situations. So yeah, 40, 40 pounds, 50 dollars. You're probably going to go with the uh, with that at some point. But I still think 10 is good enough if it just means that you're using it. Uh, okay. Uh, school friends in the classroom as well as siblings, couldn't agree more. Let's just say for classroom use as well, the Windows version will work with the whiteboard and words popping out of pictures oh, huge. In, in, in a mainstream class is a good piece of software. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous to think otherwise. So, so I actually think we've got our first crossover product with this as well, in, in a way. Okay, uh, just to finish the wrap up, uh, use core first or whatever other core language scheme you're using, be that pod, be that Sonoflex, be that core first, be that one of our competitors. I don't really care. Uh, I do. But uh, use your other language strategy or where you see the child developing onto yeah, as a way to get that language and to stop being too nouny, being a nouner, or being verbist. Any other, <laughs> can you think of any more terms we could use, Susan? The nouny? I kind of like <laughs> nouny. Nouny. I, I, I kind of like nouny. Um, I, I hate being nouny, but I like the term. I think it's very clear. <laughs> Yeah, is that check out Snapseed, use it on your classroom whiteboard, use it on your iSeries, use your iPad to create content, even if you use a full AAC system such as an iSeries Plus. Okay. Uh, just checking the chat room before we wrap up for the night. If you purchase for iPad, do you need to purchase for the Toby i12 as well to cross over? Yes, you do. But but what we did is we made the price 
reasonable. I hope people recognize that. You know, forty pounds, fifty dollars, we think is a reasonable price. Uh, yeah, you would need to buy both if you're going to if you're going to do iPad and screen uh, and and PC. Okay. Speak now or forever hold your peace. This is the end of the webinar. Uh, we're getting near the end of the webinar. My contact details. If anybody just wants to reach out to me directly, uh, Twitter and Facebook are just as good a way to contact me as email. Uh, we try oh. to do we def try to do these every two weeks. The next one in a month's time, or the next one I've got registered in a month's time, is on AAC and music and how we're using music to engage kids in communication. Uh, I'm going to try and squeeze another one in, although I'm going on vacation shortly. But I might try and wrap, uh, get another one in on art. Uh, in the meantime, we are desperate to hear what you want to hear about. If there's a topic you want to hear, you email us, ask for a power clinic online on a subject. The other thing I must tell you is that a lot of our more standard kind of training offerings, where you know we present on a topic, are available through our website. So don't just come to power clinics. Do also go and look at our YouTube channels. Uh, uh, our training resources through my Toby Dino, uh, my Toby Dynamox and Toby We also have tobydynamox.co.uk now, which is our specific UK website, which also has the shop for the software and the hardware. Good. I'm just checking the chat window. Susan, thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. We should also say there's a big RET event in the UK and in the US next week, uh, featuring Susan Norwell. Uh, so be on the lookout for those courses. I can't recommend them enough. Thank uh, you. That's US next week. UK is in October. That's right. Uh, somebody's saying, I wish my kids' teachers and therapists are listening. We record all of these and we post them on the Power Clinic Online website. We also just put them on YouTube. So feel free to just share the recordings with your, uh, with your teachers and therapists. And yeah, invite them along. Get them along. We're, yeah, they're more than welcome. Good. I'm wrapping up. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Good, good okay. audience. Great questions. The questions really make the uh, make the webinars. Uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Bye. Bye.